Good morning and welcome to our devotional here on this Friday. And I pray again uh, that you've had a wonderful week in the Lord. Um, more specifically, that you have um, you know, found a way to, as we enter into this gratitude season, right, of harvest, um, that you not only prepare for your harvest, because I believe God has that for you, but that you have a heart of gratitude, that you make sure that you're preparing yourself for that. Um, today's um, title is called, um, the devotional is called A Covenant. And it's based on Deuteronomy 7, 8. And it says, um, rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you and he was keeping the oath he had sworn to your ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand uh, of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You know, um, have you ever made a promise to your kids, right? And when you make that, um, you know, to your children, it, it just maybe maybe you did it just to, to, to stop them from asking right I, I think I've made that mistake in the past and um, when they, the kids were very young and you know when you're making a promise it's not easily forgotten when it comes to children right I mean they they're quickly we will remind you they'll tell you when are we gonna go when are we gonna do this when are we gonna do that and children will constantly be on you when it comes to that promise until it's fulfilled and uh, I think we all can account um, also for a broken promise right whether we broke the promise broke the promise or um, or maybe it was somebody broke the promise to us right but um, when it's never fulfilled, it leaves a lasting impression, right? Um, there's hurt, there's disappointment, um, and it also, we lose credibility in the sense of being able to, to promise again, right? To say, I promise you I'm going to do that. Um, because that's what a, pro a covenant is. It is a promise. And it is associated directly when it comes to God, an agreement between you and God and, his, of course, and His people. And when you make a covenant with God, you're making a promise with God, not, not to man, not to, not to the, the human side of this world. You're making it. And James puts it very clear. He even tells us, if you can avoid that, it's better, better to let, let your, let your uh, I guess what your intentions are clear. He, he says in James chapter 5, verse number 12, but most of all, but my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you're, you're, you will not sin and be condemned. I mean, he's warning you. Don't make promises that you're not going to keep. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no, so to speak, right? He's warning us of making any type of promise, specifically above uh, when it comes to the things of this world, uh, on heaven or earth or something else. And he's saying outright, he said, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Otherwise, you're getting yourself into trouble when it comes to making promises with God that you don't intend in keeping. And so here it is, the element of what kind of covenant have you broken with the Lord? What kind of promises have you made that I promise you I'm going to do this, Lord? I promise you I'm going to, to, to live like this or not do this anymore. Stop doing this, right? But God, he never forgets his promises. Amen. Every time he makes a promise, he fulfills it. And he he fulfills each one and ensures that you'll never go without his promise within your life. There's a great psalm in Psalm 105 verses 8 through 11. Join me as we read it. It says he always stands by his covenant, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree and to the people of Israel as a never ending covenant. I will give you the land of Canaan as your special possession. Wow. Look at generationally the promises of God, how they are fulfilled. If God has given you a promise, be patient, wait on him, trust his process, never question his motives or his purpose. Everything God does leads to a covenant because he fulfills that which he promises. It may take some time. I'll be the first to say it, but it requires us to wait on him and trust him. But the promises of God are this, yes and amen. And there is not one promise that he has made that he has not fulfilled. 
I want to close with this scripture found in Joshua chapter 21, verse number 45. Not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken came true. Let me say this to you. You can trust the promise of God. When he makes it with you and gives you an assurance, it is a covenant and he's never broken one of them. So I encourage you, if you're in the middle between the promise and it being fulfilled, hold on. Hold on, because you'll see it come to fruition if you just wait on the Lord and be patient. He will make his promise true and known, obviously for others to see. But wait patiently, trust in him, and be fervent when it comes to holding on to it. Believe, amen? Let's bow our heads. Lord, thank you so much. You make covenants to us, you make promises to us, and you fulfill them, God. How you do that, I don't always understand, I, but, I, but I'm able to experience it when it comes about. I'm able to look back and say, oh my God, look at the promise of your hand. When I pray over my children, you take care of them. When I ask you, God, to take care of our finances, you provide. When I ask you, Lord, to take care of our health and our family, Lord, you continue to do miraculous things that I can't explain. These are things, God, that maybe I forget in moments, but hindsight, looking back, looking at the prayer, looking at the promise, trusting in it and holding on to it, Lord, you have never been unfaithful. You always have been true and good and faithful to me. And so thank you, Lord, that the covenants that you have made, you keep them. And I pray, God, we do the same, that as we promise and as we hold on to it, God, and we trust you in it, Lord, let us be true to the covenants that we make to you. Let us hold firm to the promises that we say that will serve you and live for you and love you, God. I pray, God, that you would help us on these journeys, God. Give us strength as we press forward. I pray blessing for your children now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and may he give you peace throughout this week. Amen. God bless you and thanks for joining. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I, I want to remind you tomorrow we are continuing our work. I'm sure you can see the progress that we have made in our lighting. It looks pretty good. Um, those of you that were able to see it on Sunday, hopefully by this tomorrow, right? Essentially in the next couple of days, is uh, you'll be able to see the completion of at least a good portion of it. Um, but again, we can use your help if you want to come join us. Saturday, we're here at 10 a.m. working for the kingdom of God. And then I want to invite you back to our service on, on, um, on Sunday as we open a new series, as we are challenged once again on the next chapter of our lives. Um, I just pray that you, 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 you receive and you're open and you allow God to speak to your hearts. Amen. Thanks for joining us and God bless you.